Welcome back to Horace Works guys and the Mustang Project, an Australian delivered 2001 New Edge Cobra Mustang. So the car needs quite a bit of work to get it back to roadworthy and I've got about a week to do it all, so the pressure's on. All right, so today we're going to address one of the biggest problems with this Mustang and that is the dodgy steering. In the previous video, I've documented everything that is currently wrong with my Australian Mustang Cobra. And in the video before that, I went through all the features and unique little details that are different for this Australian Mustang compared to the US version. So go ahead and check out those videos if you like. Also, consider subscribing if you like DIY videos that you can do at home in your garage, just like me. That's what this channel is all about. I don't have any fancy hoists or equipment here. It's really about doing projects at home and uh, hopefully uh, giving you the confidence to do these sort of projects yourself in your own garage. So besides the fact that no inspector is going to pass this car when the steering wheel wobbles in their hand, it's, it's just not a nice thing to experience. The first thing you do when you step into a car is grab a steering wheel and turn it right well this steering wheel is loose in your hands it's 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 absolutely terrible so besides it probably not passing roadworthy it, it just doesn't inspire confidence in me to drive the car like i want to i actually had a look and i know what the problem is there's a joint that's loose inside the uh, steering column so today in this video we're going to fix that and i'm going to show you every step required to do that job here's the tools you're going to need Okay, the first thing you will obviously need is another steering column. This is not a serviceable part, so unless you're an automotive engineer and like a challenge, you're best off buying a replacement steering column like I have. I picked this up for $81 US, so they are quite cheap. Next, you'll need a ratchet and some extensions, a 13mm socket, a 10mm socket, an 8mm socket, a 7mm socket, a T50 socket, a T20 socket, a 5mm hex socket, a couple of Phillips screwdrivers, a small flathead screwdriver, an 8mm spanner, a steering wheel puller kit, a light and some safety gloves. Alright, we're ready to go here. So you're obviously going to be dealing with several key components under your dash. So make sure you've got a clean area to work in. We'll be disconnecting the battery first because there are several key modules underneath your dash there where the steering is. And we don't want to fry anything or accidentally set off our airbag. <laughs> that wouldn't be very good. So disconnect your battery and let the fun begin. And the first thing we're going to do is open this box which came from the good old US of A. Alright, so as you can see, this steering column is quite an intricate piece of kit. There's uh, quite a few things going on. And from what I understand it, it's not a serviceable part. So once things don't go right in here, you're uh, pretty much uh, due for a new one. Now the issue I've got with mine is that this shaft is very loose. When the steering wheel is attached to it here, this shaft uh, has a lot of free play in it. And the reason that is, is because if you look in there, there's a joint, a knuckle that uh, rotates. And the joint on mine, unfortunately for me, has come loose. Now, I don't know why that is. Uh, whether one of the pins has come out or these just wear out over time. If you know the reason, please uh, comment below and let me know. But basically, that's it. I'm going to need to swap this steering column out. So while I go ahead and do that, I'm going to record this entire procedure step by step so that if you need to do this on your car, your Mustang, then uh, maybe you can follow along to this video. And now what we've got to do is get in there and start taking things apart. So let's go. Okay, so the first thing we'll need to remove is this lower dash panel, which is held on by three plastic clips and two bolts. 
The plastic clips you can undo with a Phillips head screwdriver and an 8mm socket will get the two bolts out. As you can see my plastic shield is broken here so this last bolt isn't holding anything but you'll probably have to remove this bolt as well in order to take this shield off. When you take the plastic shield off you'll see a couple of extra bolts that also need to come out because we'll remove this entire metal shield as well. Hello? I'm working on my car. Yeah, I am, yeah. Can I be one of your videos? Sorry? Can I be one of your videos? Well, this one's about Mustangs, sweetie. Are you a Mustang? Huh? This one's about Mustangs. Are you a Mustang? No. But no. you're in it. Like, can I help you with this video and I'll be in the video? Alright, just for a second, okay? All right, this video? is Gracie and she wants to be in the video. Hi everyone. Hi. Hi. All right, what, what do you want to do? Me? Can I oh, be you want to be in it too? Hi. Yeah. Say hi. Hi. Do we like Mustangs? Yeah. Yeah, we yeah. like Mustangs? <laughs> All right, what you got there? What's that? Got a truck. You got your monster truck. Oh, you have to turn it on first. <laughs> Alright, you guys go play. I've got to make this video. Anyway, back to work. Let's get these last screws out. With that metal shield gone, you will see this dash support beam that's been bolted in here. Not the best manufactured part I've seen, but this is probably an afterthought that was required on these right hand drive Mustangs. Anyway, a 10mm socket will get the two bolts out. Okay, we now have good access to the back of the steering column and the next thing will be to get all the electrical stuff disconnected. Your airbag and combination switch wiring runs through here, so this is why you want to make sure that your battery is disconnected first. We'll be undoing these three clips located here. Yours may be clipped to the steering column itself, mine are just hanging freely here. And once they are undone, use a 7mm socket to undo this large connector bolted to the bottom of the steering column. So with that done, it's time to remove the steering wheel itself. Start by taking the two plastic clips on the sides of the wheel here off with a small flat plate screwdriver and then using an 8mm socket, take the two bolts out on either side of the steering wheel. Okay, with those bolts out, you will be able to pull the airbag away from the wheel. But before you can remove it completely, you need to undo this brown connector. With the airbag out of the way, it's time to take the wheel off. We'll be undoing this bolt, but before that, just unclip this black connector here, and that will free up all the wiring from the wheel. Okay, you will need a steering puller to take the wheel off, so I'm just going to grab that now. To undo the bolt itself, you will need a T50 socket and it should be on there pretty tight. But once it gets going, it's easy to remove. With the steering bolt removed, it's time to put the steering wheel puller on to the wheel. Okay, a steering wheel puller is a fairly simple device. Basically two screws go into the positions drilled onto the wheel and then the center bolt pushes down on the steering column shaft here. While the wheel is being pulled by these two bolts here, acting in opposing directions, forcing the wheel off your steering shaft. Now, you can probably pull a steering wheel off of your column without one of these, using a lot of pulling and hammering, but this is a tapered joint, so it's on there nice and tight. Plus, remember what we're trying to do here. We're replacing a loose steering column because it's damaged. So to avoid causing any more damage to the steering assembly by banging or pulling or prying on the wheel, I strongly suggest you pick up or rent a steering wheel puller kit. They really are not that expensive and once you have one, you can do as many steering wheel replacements as you like on this car or any others you may have now or in the future. With this Mustang, the steering wheel buttons are slightly getting in the way of my steering puller on the right hand side. So to avoid accidentally damaging the buttons, 
I'm going to loosen the two mounting bolts on the right side here with a 5mm hex socket and that will allow me to just slightly shift this out of the way. You don't need to remove the buttons completely, just move them over slightly. Okay, with room available, now I can go ahead and finish installing the puller onto the wheel. I have a couple of sockets on my end bolts, just because I don't want to wind this middle bolt in all the way, but you don't need those if you don't want to use them. I just didn't feel like wasting time winding this bolt all the way down, so I shortened the travel of the bolts by sliding these sockets on. So now that that's on there nice and tight, go ahead and grab your 17mm socket and start winding the center bolt in. As you do that, the steering wheel will slowly let go of the steering shaft and come free. So that's it, disconnect the steering puller from the wheel and remove the wheel itself. So now with the wheel safely out of the way, we're left with the clock spring, the bottom cover, the top cover and the ignition barrel. We're going to start by removing the bottom cover which is held in by four Phillips head screws. Once the bottom cover is gone, we'll get the ignition barrel out of the way too. So to do that, we'll turn the key to the accessory position and then using this pre-drilled hole here, we're going to push in the retaining ball with a small screwdriver, which will let the ignition barrel pop out. So this is the ball retaining pin you need to push in and this is where the screwdriver goes. Okay, with the ignition barrel removed and out of the way, let's start unbolting the steering column. There are four main bolts on the underside that hold the column to the car and of course one bolt that connects the column to the steering shaft. So first let's loosen some of these nuts and then remove the nut connecting the steering column to the steering shaft. With the steering column loose you should now be able to wriggle the top plastic cover off the column and unclip the electrical connector that goes to the combination switch. Then, using a T20 socket, undo the two screws holding the combination switch to the column. Okay, with that out of the way, remove all of the remaining loose bolts holding the steering column to the car, and then you should be good to wriggle the steering column free. Okay, there you go. The steering column is out, and we're halfway there. Looking at the two steering columns side by side, I'm just going to check for any differences. You obviously don't want to start putting this into the car and realize that it won't fit. I can see straight away that the front mounting points are constructed differently. The 2001 column I have has these floating rubber bushes, but the newer 0304 column mounts are solid. But they are positioned in exactly the same spot on both columns, so that shouldn't be a problem. Looking at the mounting holes for the accessories and the rear mounting bolts and it all seems exactly the same. The steering shaft itself has the same size knuckles on both and they do connect with the same size bolt. Up front the key lock mechanisms are the same as well as the key wells. There is a plastic shroud here that will need to move over to the other column. If I flip the column over, we can see this module is connected to the ignition. So this must be something to do with the ignition or anti-theft. So we'll get that onto the new column. Looking at these two serial numbers, they are different, but the electrical pin layout is identical inside. So I'm pretty confident that this new column will fit my car. Okay, so I'm going to move these attachments over to the new column. The black one is the ignition electronics I just talked about and the yellow one is the clock spring. Here we go.
Ok, the replacement steering column is ready, time to put this on the car. Ok, so make sure that your joint for mating with the steering shaft here is facing the correct way so that you can slide the two connections together and then slide the column in, watching your wiring and connect the steering column to the steering shaft. There you go, once the column is connected, pull the combination switch loosely in place and then take a couple of mounting bolts for the steering column and wind them on. There you go, the column is in and it's the home stretch from here. Let's button everything up, starting by winding the other mounting bolts in just loosely for now and reconnecting the combination switch to the column using the two T20 screws. Once you have the two screws in, just check that the switches work as they should and check that your electrical connectors are firmly in. Now just move your column to its lower setting so that you have space and go ahead and install the upper plastic cover. You may have to wind out a couple of mounting bolts like I have to slide this back into position. Once your cover is on, get the mounting bolts back in and then it's time to reconnect this main connector underneath the column using the 7mm bolt. Then reconnect the three electrical connectors underneath the column. So now it's time to put the ignition barrel back in. This is super easy, just slide the barrel back in and check that the operation of the key is fine. Once you're happy with that, it's time to get the bolt back in to the steering shaft. And when that's done, it's time to snug up the four bolts and the steering shaft bolt nice and firm. Alright, just recheck that everything underneath here is nice and secure. If your car is left hand drive instead of right hand drive, you should mount these connectors back onto the column here. But because my car is right hand drive, my wiring harness runs in the opposite direction, so for me the mounting spot on the column is obsolete. Us Australians have to make do with leaving these connectors dangling here like so. Ok now that everything is as safe as can be, it's time to get the dash braces back in place. I'll start by installing this horseshoe brace using the two 10mm bolts. So I think I might have worked out why this extra beam is in here, if it is an extra beam. Tell me if the US models have this, but I think it looks makeshift and uh, pretty home yard job at that. I think what Ford's done, Ford Australia that is, is put this cross beam in to protect the three connectors that are meant to be mounted in there but they obviously don't reach so they created this cross member to stop people from kicking it kicking it loose hmm tell me if i'm wrong do the us models have this with the cross beam back in place let's get the bottom plastic cover back on using the four phillips head screws then let's put the bottom metal shield back in using the eight millimeter bolts and another thing the fuse box cover supposed to be exposed like that I kind of feel like it needs a cover am i wrong tell me if i'm wrong and finally once you put the plastic shroud back on using the bolts and clips you are done under here all right moment of truth everybody everything underneath is buttoned up as you saw so it's time to put the wheel back on uh well now we're about to find out whether i've completely wasted my day or uh, whether I'm going to pass registration in a week. He goes nothing. So we just feed through the cables, reattach the wheel like so. Let's put in this one bolt that we took out. It was a hex five, if you remember. Just tighten these up. Let's reconnect these plugs in there. So far we got some wobble. It's not looking good. Let's tighten this thing up and see whether it goes away. Let's tighten this sucker up. See what we've got. There we go. All right, you ready? <laughs> I think we have lift off. Yep, 
Success. <laughs> Got a little groan from up here, but check it out, no movement. Yes, winner. <laughs> Nothing. Woo! All right, let's button this thing up. Only the airbag to go. Quick wipe down. Let's plug her in. It shouldn't explode in our face because the power's still off. There it goes. And the last two screws on either side. Remember that this is an eight. Caps back on. Double check. Yep. Excellent. Excellent. That is very good. Woo! One less thing to worry about. Let's put the battery back on. Hopefully the airbag doesn't explode. Good. Nice. All right, I'm just gonna turn the uh, ignition on uh, to make sure that everything works as it should because we've obviously unplugged a lot of electrical connections and to make sure that the airbag doesn't explode in my face. Now, I always like to let it sit for about 30 seconds before I start the car up after I've reattached the battery because the car's been dead, so all the computers need to basically boot back up and um, initiate all the systems. So never just turn the key over um, after you've uh, reattached the battery. Let the uh, systems check themselves and um, run all the little systems checks and startups that they need to do. So give it about 30 seconds and then, moment of truth. And everything looks good. No lights on the dash. So that's it guys, a steering column on a Mustang Cobra swapped out, done and dusted. This took me roughly a day to complete. It's now dark outside, but honestly, you can probably get this done in about two to three hours if you take your time. The reason it took me a lot longer is because I had to record every step I took so that I could document it for you in case you want to follow along and do this job on your car. Speaking about doing jobs on your car, if that's the way you're inclined like I am, make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that you can see when I post up something new. This channel is all about working on your own cars, having fun doing it and doing it at home. You know, no hoists or specialist equipment here and I want to keep it that way. I want to see how far I can go with my projects and um, give you the confidence to try this stuff at home yourself if you're uh, interested in working on your own cars too. But I personally find it very, very rewarding. All right, so with that job done, we're now getting through the list uh, that we need to in order to get this car to uh, the roadworthy registration. We're slowly ticking off the list now, which I'm very, very uh, happy about. It looks like we'll get there, fingers crossed. We've still got almost a week uh, until we, we're uh, booked in for an inspection and the next job for this car will be the ball joints and the tie rod ends. So if you want to see that video, make sure you subscribe and click the bell so that you'll get notified when that comes up as well. But anyway, fingers crossed that nothing um, pops up that I haven't thought about during the week and then we'll get this car registered and uh, happy days. But enough chit chat from me. If you've got this problem on your car, then consider following this video and do this at home yourself as well.